So I'm going to ask, um, <coughs> just to, like start us off, what is your name, age and what do you do? My name is Isabel. I'm 20 and I'm doing fine art full time at UWE and I am trying to get more and more involved with animal rights activism currently um, and I'm currently a member of Rising Up. Mm -hmm. um, which is like a really broad activist group um, that cover like like social problems within Bristol, um, like a lot of environmental stuff, mm -hmm. literally anything. I think I really like the flexibility. So it's not like we only focus on this. It's like anyone can get involved and anyone can come and say, well, I really don't like what's going on here. Do you think we could do something? And that kind of flexibility around like, everyone's needs mm -hmm. um, is really cool. When you like wake up to how much shit's going on, you're just like, well, fuck, I can't just sit at home and like waste time. I need to be doing something. So we're here today to take action on air pollution. We want to say clearly to Bristol City Council, the mayor, the metro mayor, that we want to see a city that isn't killing 300 people each year as a result of air pollution. So this is it's part of a series of actions, uh, a campaign that is escalating. Um, there's a campaign in London, there's the one in Bristol, and they could go different directions, but like we need to do this because otherwise like children are dying, my lungs are getting stunted, I've got friends with you know permanent conditions now from this air pollution. This is not all right and it needs to be changed and we're going to take that stand to, to make that happen. We're here to process today because we want the council to step forward with their clean air zones. And we're going to boogie until they do so. How do you think the roadblock went today? Um, it was interesting. We got like the same kind of like mixed response from the public, which can be argued as a positive thing because like our aim is to like raise awareness. Um, so positive and negative response is all part of the same raising awareness thing. At the same time, I put a lot of effort into trying to get the public on our board which I found really difficult today. They were basically saying like a big a huge focus on whether or not we were from Bristol and yeah. like if you're not like why you're not doing it over there where you came from and it's like well we are here to like help we're not here for us. Yeah. Next week uh, I'm going to go into London and join a team of around 10 people um, and we're going to do a series of actions basically saying we're actually going to stay in this road to raise awareness about you know, children dying from these health problems that the government refuses to take account of. Um, and we're going to stay there until they arrest us. And once they arrest us, we'll go into custody, they'll let us out, and we'll go back the next day and do it again. And we're just going to keep doing it until they physically stop us from doing it, and that probably means they're going to have to send us to prison. I'm also involved with Bristol Animal Save, um, who are part of the Worldwide Save movement. It's a grassroots um, group who basically have agreements with the slaughterhouses to be there. We have a right to be there for three minutes. Um, and we bear witness to the animals on their way to slaughter. So at the moment we've got an exhibition coming up on the 14th and it's gonna be like five days of different talkers. Um, the exhibition will be running pretty much 24 seven. So from like 10 in the morning to about 10 in the evening. Um, and We've got artwork from like different artists from all over the UK coming in at the moment. My piece is going to be based on um, <clears throat> kind of like one pig that goes through the system. Um, and I want to try and well, highlight a couple of things. One being like the lack of awareness about like how sort of lovely these animals are and how they're just mass produced and like churned out like pieces of machinery 
Um, so I chose 150, which is the average amount of piglets that people could give birth to in the UK farm. It's an interesting one because it's kind of um, very much in the system. We're not kind of like out on the streets. We're doing so we're doing something very much by the book. A lot of artists wouldn't be involved with activism, so. I'd say by submitting work, that in itself is kind of a form of activism because you're making something and trying to change minds with it. Yeah, it's just really nice to blur the lines between like protest and art. Um, as you can see here, direct action just took place, uh, spraying graffiti on the front of City Hall in order to highlight um, the toxic levels there of air pollution in the city. 9,500 Londoners killed every year, that's about 25 a day, which means 25 killed by air pollution since we were here yesterday. So we arrested four times during the week. Um, the first one was a bit of a red herring, it was for um, obstructing the highway, we sat down on Tower Bridge and waited and blocking traffic until they arrested us. Eight of us started the week of action, um, but by the time that we were um, sort of on a roll and um, the last two actions we only had four of us and that was, you know, after that last action was when the four of us were sent to prison. So what got us there was three times in a row doing the same action at the same location, um, which was spray paint on the front of City Hall. We managed to get a meeting with um, the mayor's office in London, Sadi Khan's office, not with the mayor himself, uh, which was our demand going in there. Um, in terms of sort of, yeah, the what's next, this, this was very much an experiment. This was to see what would happen. Um, one, how to get to prison. What kinds of things would you have to do to poke the legal system until it sends you there mm -hmm. um, on remand? Um, but then to how interested the media would be. Well, Anti-pollution protesters took their message to London City Hall tonight demanding a meeting with the mayor about the quality of the capital's air. This will be cleaned off in just a few hours, whereas stunted lungs cost us our lives. It does matter what kind of news coverage you get. Mm. In some ways you just want the conversation to be happening. In the, these, this age of Trump, etc., there is the, uh, the demonisation of protesters as if protesters are there just to um, damage society um, you know that 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 narrative can lead to people then who are maybe if we've done an obstruction in, in the road um, they could be more likely to try to drive their car through us everyone knows there's all this stuff going on but trying to pretend it's not going on I think it's more detrimental to your mental health than finding out what's really going on where you stand in it yeah. and how lucky you are, and maybe what you can do in the future. I've always been quite <clears throat> kind of in tune with suffering in the world, but I thought that was just kind of part of me that it didn't really matter. Whereas all this has made me realise that actually I can use it for something and actually change people's minds. Four years ago, reading the news would feel quite depressing. I, t it's like something I have to do. Like I have to know what's going on in the world to know where I stand in it. And it just makes me unbelievably grateful. I'll see what's going on and I'll think, okay, there's nothing I can do about that right now. I'm not gonna let it get me down and I'm not gonna feel guilty, but I am so fucking grateful to have what I have. <laughs> As we look at what's going on in the world, I mean, there is just so much destruction and so much that can leave us really sad. I think um, activism, activism is the best antidepressant that I've come across. To me, it's become really important to sort of acknowledge this sadness and give myself time for, for grief. Um, but it's also in that grief that I'm able to to see um, sort of the, the, the passion of, actually I want the world to be different. Um, I can alchemize grief and change it into passion. Um, and it is in many ways the, um, the fuel that keeps me going. I think the support you get from the people around you is so vital to like keeping that drive going. Um, there's no way I could go to vigils on my own. Um, 
not feel like absolute shit after. It's that realizing you're all in the same thing together. Um, and with enough different minds and with enough people, you can really like come up with new things you'd never really think of yourself. Um, and also realizing how you're not alone in it.